Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Sangeeta to Teach. Today in this video we are going to cover the minimum wages under the Code on Wages 2020 with the sections. So this is going to be the chapter 2 of Code on Wages. So it is dealing with the minimum wages. Previously we have covered the recent changes in the Code on Wages 2020 and also covered the chapter 1 that is the preliminary which includes the important definitions of the Code on Wages. So now this is the chapter 2 that is minimum wages under code on wages. If you have missed the earlier parts, I am going to give the links in the description. You can have a glance at them after this class. So now let's start the minimum wages. So before we start with the sections, let us understand what is included in the minimum wages. What are the criteria that is taken into consideration in order to calculate the minimum wages. So let's have a brief idea about what is minimum wage and let's get into the sections right so let's talk about the calculation of minimum wages so the draft rules lay down the criteria for fixing the minimum wages per day for an employee so what are the criteria? so the criteria is that they are considering three adult consumption units per household so three adult consumptions are considered and daily intake of 2700 calories per consumption unit so so for each person it is 2700 calories is must in a day so this is also considered while calculating your minimum wage so and also they consider 10 percent of expenditure on your rent 20 percent of your expenditure on fuel electricity and miscellaneous items and also 25% of your expenditure on education, medical requirement and contingencies. So you have to remember, so it is 10% for expenditures on rent, 20% on the electricity and fuel and 25% on your education, medicines and contingency. So these are the percentages that are can be asked in your exam as well. So for uh, when you consider a minimum wage they are going to consider so for at least a person who is living in a country would require these basic things so they would consider the minimum wage according to this criteria so the criteria are three adults and daily intake of 2700 calories 10 percent on your rent 20 percent on your electricity and fuel 25 percent on your education medical requirements and contingencies contingencies are unexpected or uncertainties that you day in your uh, see in your day-to-day -day life coming to the norms of the fixing of minimum wages it is based calc it is based on some geographical areas as well and it is based on the skill category so based on your skill category based on the place where you belong where you belong to that is the geographical area is also considered in in order to fix a minimum wage so according to central government they divide this geographical areas into three categories that is metropolitan where the population is more than 40 lakhs the second is the non-metropolitan cities that is uh, where the population is between 10 lakhs to 40 lakhs and there is also another area that is the rural area right and also that as according to the skill category they consider the category to be unskilled semi-skilled skilled or highly skilled so based on what category you fall under by that they fix a minimum wage so you understood that based on your geographical location based on your skill category also they consider your minimum wage so the central government will constitute a committee so the chairman of this committee will be the chief labor commissioner right remember it is chief labor commissioner so who is going to advise or modify the changes that are there in the categories of your occupations so there is also a separate technical committee that will recommend on how you can fix the minimum wages for the working journalist as well so you understood the overview of this minimum wages that they considered your minimum things that are required for the worker it is con also considering the skill category and also the place they belong to the geographical areas also so considering all these things they are going to fix a minimum wage so you have understood the minimum wage minimum wages a minimum of that amount is to be given to that particular worker who is working okay 
so this is fixed by the government right now you have understood this so now let's talk about the sections related to this chapter so we know that minimum wages fall under the chapter 2 of the code on wages so if there is a question related to minimum wages belongs to which chapter the answer should be chapter 2 coming to the sections so we have already discussed uh, the previous lecture on the preliminary definitions so according to the chapter 2 minimum wages will start with the section 5 the section 5 talks about the payment of minimum rate of wages so here we consider um, that less than the minimum wage nobody is going to pay you so at least the minimum wages pay to an worker so section 6 will talk about fixation of the minimum wage so how they are going to fix so we have looked at the criteria right in the similar way they are going to consider what are the things that are considered in fixing of the minimum wage is in this section 6 section 7 will talk about the components of the minimum wages what are the components that are included section 8 will talk about procedure what is the procedure value fixing or revising the minimum wage section 9 will talk about the power of central government to fix the floor wage so you have to remember it this is very very important because section 9 talks about who is having the power to fix the floor wage you may have a question saying that who is going to fix the floor wage so your options can be the central government the state government the appropriate government or the central boards so your answer is the central government you have to remember who is having whole power the whole power is in the hands of central government and they are going to fix this floor wage the state government and the advisory board are going to give their recommendations they are going to advise the central government but the whole power is within the central government itself so the power is with the central government to fix the floor wage coming to section 10 section 10 talks about the wages of employee who works for less than normal working day so particularly for a normal working day you will have some rate if that person is not working for that whole day but his uh, less than the required number of hours is working so what is the wage that is paid for that particular worker is discussed in the section 10 coming to section 11 it talks about the wages for two or more class workers for example <coughs> um you may be work, you may be an unskilled worker but you have learned and you have got trained and now you're working in a skilled or semi-skilled so what kind of uh, minimum wage that has to be given to you is also discussed in this section 11 that is wage for two or more classes of work section 12 talks about the minimum time rate wage for peace work we will discuss this in detail in the next slides section 13 will talk about fixing of hours so how many hours you need to work for a normal working day is also fixed under this minimum wages and finally the section 14 will talk about the overtime wages so the chapter 2 will start with the section 5 and end with the section 14 so these are the different sections that are related to the minimum wages so we will discuss in detail about each section so section, five. so section 5 will talk about the payment of minimum rate of wages. So what is that minimum rate has been is, is notified by the appropriate government. So no employer shall pay to an employee their wage which is less than the minimum rate of wages. For example, let us consider the appropriate government has said that uh, 200 rupees is the minimum wage that you have to pay for your work. So no employer, no owner shall pay less than 200. The minimum is 200. They have to pay 200. So they can pay 250. They can pay whatever more than 200, but not less than 200. Okay. So this is so the example that you can consider that appropriate government will fix some rate and no employer shall pay less than that rate. Coming to section 6, which is fixing of minimum wages as i said you the appropriate government shall fix the minimum wage based on the time work or the piece work so time work is how many hours so for one hour i'm going to give you 100 rupees so if you're working for eight hours you're going to get 800 rupees this is the time work for piece work 
piece work is basically considered in the production area where when where you produce one piece you're going to get a rate of that particular piece if you if i say that if you produce one bottle i'm going to give you 10 rupees if you have produced 100 bottles you're going to get 1000 rupees in a similar way piece way piece work is considered as well as the time work is also considered it shall depend upon what kind of work you're doing so and it also considers the time work based on it can be a, an hourly work, it can be a daily work or an by monthly wise. So the time is considered to be in terms of hours, months and a day. So the purpose of fixing of the minimum wage is under this section, the appropriate government shall take into consideration about the skill category that we already talked. The skill of the workers is also considered. It can be unskilled, skilled, semi-skilled and highly skilled and also based on the geographical area or both are considered. The skill as well as the geographical area both are considered. And the next is, in addition to such minimum wage of rate, the category of the workers is also considered when they are working in hazardous occupations. When there is more risk, the minimum wage rate would also increase. So it is based on hazardous occupations, the, the work kind where the temperature is high or they also consider when the temperature is high or when the temperature is low, the, uh, the kind of humidity or the difficulty to bear, uh, is it the underground work or the whole thing is also the type of occupation and the working condition are also considered in fixing of the minimum wage. So you understood that fixation of the minimum wage is based on time work or of piece work. It is based on the time work. If it is on the time work, it would uh, take into consideration of an hourly work or a monthly work or a daily work. And they also consider the skill category and also the geographical location. And also they consider the category of the working conditions, whether they are working underground, whether they are working in an hazardous occupation or all, all these are also considered while fixing a minimum wage. So this is also important because how they are going to fix the minimum wage also plays an important role. Coming to section 7, it talks about the components. So what are the components that are considered while fixing a minimum wage? So uh, they consider the basic wage or the basic rate of wage with an allowance that is uh, given by or adjusted by the appropriate government. It may be with the direct variation of the cost of living index number which is nothing but the cost of living they consider the cost of living the cost of living from one city is different from the another city the cost of uh, living in um, delhi is uh, more expensive than uh, staying in some other state so in this similar way they would consider the cost of living elements so while uh, considering the minimum wage they're going to consider this cost of living and the second thing would be a basic rate of wage with or without the cost of living allowance. So, so they may consider the cost of living, they may not consider the cost of living. And they will also give the cash value of the concession in respect to the supplies of the essential commodities at a concession rate. So if it is the cash value, if there are some essential commodities, then you would get some concession. So the basic rate of wages with or without the cost of living is also considered along with the cash value of some concessions in, under your essential commodities. The, uh, see, they would give you some essential commodities with some concession. If you are buying it outside, it would be more. When you are buying uh, it, you would get a concession or maybe it would be a 10%, 20% or so. Or it can be inclusive, all, inclusive of all the rates. It can be the basic rate the cost of living and also the value of concession all the three can be considered with or without the cost of living is considered only with the cost of living is also considered as a component it depends upon the appropriate government on which they wanted to consider the cost of living elements and the cash value of concession and respective of supplies of essential commodities as concession rate shall be computed by such authorities so based on the appropriate government may notify so it may change from time to time so it is given by the appropriate government so now you understood the components of the minimum wages so the component of the minimum wage would may consider the cost of living it may consider the cost of living or may not consider it 
along with the cash um, uh, value of the concession if you want some essential uh, commodities so you may get some concession from it and it may include all of them also the cost of living the cash value and the concession as well coming to section 8 it will talk about the procedure for fixing and the revising the minimum wages so there would be a procedure so what are the different procedures that they uh, they take up in this minimum wages is that they may appoint the committees they may give a notification so there are two methods so the procedure can be committees this may be a question to you what is the procedure that in fixing of a minimum wage or revising a minimum wage it would be a notification process or a committee method in the committee method they would appoint a committee and they consider the recommendations with respect to fixation or the revisation in that case when it comes to the notification they would publish a notification um, for the people who are more affected so, so for the proposal of that people who are more affected so they would uh, specify some particular date which is not less than two months from the date of notification and they would consider all the following uh, recommendations from that particular people and uh, only then after getting all the recommendations only they are going to proceed with the fixation and revising of the minimum wages so each committee if it is going to be a committee wise each committee is going to have uh, it is being appointed by the appropriate government and they are going to have the representatives of the employers and the number of employees uh, representing is equal to the number of employers so equal number of employees and employees employers and the employees are going to work and the independent person shall not exceed one third of the total members of the committee so remember this point this have been already asked in the questions in your previous year saying that independent persons shall not include dash of the total members of the committee it can be half one third three fourth or something like that so your answer should be one third remember it is a very very important point so independent people are not exceeding one third of the total members of the committee after considering the recommendations of the committee appointed it shall also consult the advisory board so as i already previously said you in the previous videos also the advisory board is under the section 42 which is very very important this advisory board is further classified into central advisory board and the state advisory board as well so we will look into the central advisory board in the coming videos also and for now remember that they are going to approach the central uh, state i mean both the advisory boards so um, they will take the consideration of the committees and also uh, consult the advisory board and take a decision in fixing on or revising the minimum wage so the uh, fixing or revising of the minimum wage is ordinarily in an interval of not it will review or uh, they will revise the minimum wage for every five years for every five years this is going to take place this is also very very important remember it is not exceeding five years so for every five years they are going to revise the minimum wages so so it is also very very important to so remember this point so independent people there should not exceed one third of the total members and the government would also consult the advisory board advisory board will fall under the section 42 remember this point and also the appoint uh, the appropriate government shall revise or the review the minimum rates for every five years it shall not have an interval not more than five years okay coming to section 9 power of central government to fix the flow of wage so as i said you it is not so nobody nobody is nobody else is going to have this power but only the central government is going to have the power to fix the flow of wage so the central government this is important just remember this so they are going to consider the living standards of the worker uh, as we already discussed they are going to consider the living standards they are going to consider your geographical area the skill category that you fall under everything is considered by the central government in fixing the floor wage and the minimum rate of the wages fixed by the appropriate government shall not be less than the floor wage as i said you appropriate government in each state can also put a minimum rate so for example uh, andhra pradesh is giving a wage rate of uh, 170 if the floor wage is 200 so they it is very compulsory that they have to uh, change this 170 to 200 the minimum rate should be 200 
for this is an example so it is considering uh, the minimum the floor wage only so the minimum rate of wages fixed by the appropriate government shall not be less than the floor wage if an uh, government if the floor wage for example it is 200 and some other state which is giving 250 for them so they cannot reduce the uh, the minimum wage to 200 okay even though the government has given the floor wage to be 200 if the government is following 250 they cannot reduce this is what is said in the second point see that point the minimum rate of wages fixed by the appropriate government shall not be less than the floor wage and if the minimum wage fixed by the appropriate government the appropriate government is some state is going to fix something and it which is earlier more than the floor wage it is more than the floor wage right this is floor wage ma'am this is uh, the state government has given some state uh, some state has given this 250 so they cannot reduce see if it is more than then they cannot reduce the fixed which is fixed earlier now i think you have a clear idea so if it is more you cannot reduce if it is less you can uh, get it to the floor wage equal to the floor wage so you have to remember that the appropriate government can fix their wages uh, that is equal to or greater than the floor wage so it can be greater than or equal to the floor wage floor wage so the, as i said you the section 9 will talk about the power of central government to fix the floor wage so it is not the state government it is not the appropriate government or it is not the advisory board that is having the power but the power is within the central government to fix the floor wage but anyhow they are going to consider the recommendations from the state government and also the advisory boards that is another case but the power is within the central government this can be an important question for you and the answer would be the central government is going to fix the floor wage so they are going to consider minimum living standards of the worker which we already discussed they are going to consider the living conditions different uh, geographical locations the different skill categories are considered by in the flow wage so the minimum rate of wages fixed by the appropriate government shall not be less than the floor wage so the minimum rate of the wages shall not be less than the floor wage so we know that uh, so section 9 talks about the power of central government to fix the floor wage so floor wage is something that is fixed by the central government so it is going to consider the minimum living standards and the different geographical locations of the people so according to these two things they are going to consider the floor wage so uh, the appropriate government may have their minimum wages but shall not be less than the floor wage so if the floor wage is uh, for suppose the floor wage is 200 the floor wage is 200 no other uh, state governments no other appropriate government can fix the wages less than this number it can be more than this or equal to this but not less than this number this is just an example i'm giving you all this is just an example okay so you understood that the minimum rate of wages fixed by the appropriate government so each government can each state government can have their minimum wages right a separate minimum wages but it should not be less than the floor wage floor wage is decided by the central government so uh, they cannot uh, have the less than this number so for suppose it is given by the central government the number can be anything but they cannot uh, give the wages um, less than that number it can be greater than or equal to uh, so the, if the number is before by the appropriate government if the wage is more and now they cannot decrease the to the floor wage for suppose if a government uh, of if, for in some other state uh, the, for example the floor wage is 200 this is an example only floor wage is 200 and some other state is providing the minimum wage at 250 they cannot reduce because the floor wage the central government is saying it is 200 i cannot reduce it from 250 to 200 if it is more it is going to be more only you cannot reduce it but if it is less if it is 180 then you have to uh, get it to 200 then you can increase if it is more you cannot reduce it if it is less you can reduce it so always the floor wage should be greater than or equal to the minimum wage that is provided by the appropriate government this is an example that i have given okay uh, now we'll talk about the section 10 so section 10 talks about the wages 
of employees who work for less than normal working day so if a worker works for less than the requisite that is a required number of hours con uh, constituting a normal working day he shall be entitled to receive wages in respect to work done uh, work done on that particular day as if he has worked for a full normal working day so for example uh, daily i work for 9 hours daily working hours are fixed for 9 hours but today there was no work given by the employer himself and so i have worked for 7 hours so they are not going to give me 7 hours of work they are going to pay me the full normal day work because there was no work from their side okay so i have completed all the work so i am going to get my normal working day wage but sometimes willfully if i am doing it with uh, but and it is not from the omission it is not from the omission from the employer side they have given me work but i am not doing the work uh, like you know so then i would not get any wage okay i hope you understood so if i'm working for less than normal working day and i really the employer himself is not giving me any work uh, then i would get normal working pay whereas if i wantedly don't do the work that is assigned to me then i wouldn't receive any wage on that particular day so it is uh, it is not by the omission of the employer then i would i won't get any money section 11 talks about the wages of two or more classes of work as i said you the two or more classes may be previously the one worker would be working in unskilled so now he started he has been trained and he had moved to semi skilled so for each category they would be having a different minimum wage right so now he would be eligible for both of them uh, and he would not get not less than the minimum rate in respect to each of such class so this is the point uh, so he is not going to get not less than that for particular each respective class coming to going to discuss about the section 12 which talks about the minimum time rate wages for piece work as i said you uh, before we used to have uh, wages only for people who have produced particular number of pieces that have been uh, assigned by the employer but now uh, it is uh, essential that they provide a minimum time rate and not minimum piece rate it is minimum time rate that the employee is going to get uh, and not the minimum piece rate has been fixed and the employer shall pay to such person not less than the minimum rate so uh, whatever the work it is it, it can be a time work or a piece work you are going to get a wage which is not less than the minimum time rate okay coming to section 13 fixing of hours of a work for normal working day so who is going to fix this number of hours of working the appropriate government is going to fix them so for example we could consider the fixing of number of uh, works in a normal day including the one or more specific intervals for example if you're working for nine hours they would consider one hour for rest so it is that you're working for your eight hours uh, inclusive then we'll go for nine hours so inclusive will talk about including the rest so uh, the government is going to fix for how many hours you're going to work in a normal working day along with the inclusive it can be one or two more breaks okay provided and each day of rest for every period of seven days that you work for so every employee is allowed to take one day of rest for working for for a period of seven days and provided if he is working on a rest day if is if, if for suppose you are working on a holiday that is on a republic day you had some work and you had to finish that work because of emergency then you are going to get a wage that is not less than the overtime so it is important that they are going to consider or they are going to fix the hours particularly based on these conditions so each person is going to have uh, uh, is going to have a rest day um, and they are going to if he is particularly working on that rest day he is going to get a rate not less than the overtime rate so for the other classes of employees it can be uh, if the employees are engaged in any emergency which would not, uh, not be foreseen or prevented or the employees engaged in work of nature of uh, preparatory or uh, complementary works which is you know i could say that uh, out uh, outside carried outside the limits of the lay down 
and the employees whose employment is essentially intermittent intermittent is casual in nature for it is seen the above part was talking about who are uh, the fixing of hours who are working in a particular time so they are going to fix time for them in particularly but some people uh, may have work today they may not have work tomorrow they may have work for two months they may not have for next three months so they may seasonal for example we can consider the seasonal workers uh, it can be ice cream industry or some people the ice cream industries or cooler industries or acs would work more in summer than in winters or so so for them what kind of um, you know, timings is to be allotted what kind of uh, hours sh should be fixed is all given by the appropriate government so employees uh, in the technical reasons technical reasons have to complete before the duty is over or the employees who have carried on uh, uh, irregular action or the natural forces for, so for them also the appropriate government shall fix the wages or the fix the working hours or the hours of work for a normal day so this is all done by the appropriate government only the employment of an employee is essentially intermittent when it is declared uh, so by the appropriate government so what kind of works come under intermittent that is irregular in nature is also uh, notified that is also uh, declared by the appropriate government under the rules and uh, what are the normal working hours for them would including the periods including the rest hours um, would be considered from the appropriate government only so this is the fixing about the working hours for the normal working day so i hope you understood uh, so normal working day if the if the if the, uh, if the work is in permanent nature that is in regular nature there would be it would be easy right it would be easy to fix in a number of working hours but when it is an in intermittent in nature irregular in nature if it is seasonal and characteristic then the appropriate government would consider some points and then uh, look into it and consider their fixing of hours of work coming to section 14 we'll talk about the wages of overtime which is very very important if an employee works on a day more than the number of hours that are required in a normal working day then the employer shall pay him for every hour or an part of an hour who has worked for an excess so the overtime rate shall not exceed not less than twice the normal wages so it is very very important this question has already occurred on your papers that is it, uh, the overtime rate is not less than two times of your normal rate it is twice the normal rate of wages so i hope it is clear and this is all about the chapter 2 that is the minimum wages thank you